Spotify is it's going to take all the stuff in that tag and it's going to string it all together. Now conversely, if you look at your output and you realize that you have a tag or you have a value in your output that looks really weird because it's a bunch of strings all stuck together, you know why now. Why is because you chose the parent that had lots of children rather than the last child that only had a text note under it. Okay, next thing to talk about. Let's look at a tag like this. This is what I want in my output. I want an image here, and the source is going to be blah, 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 xyz.jpg. Right? Let's not even worry about what the, um, what the, what the, um, where, the file, where the image is coming from, but this is what I want. I want the title. And in this case, you might remember that the title attribute of an image is what comes up when you mouse over it. And I want the title in there. Right, so and it's the same title. It's this movie title again. So I might be tempted to do this. Well, here's the thing that gets the movie title, right? And I want it right here, right? So I'm just going to paste it in there, and I get these little wavy lines under here saying, "Ah, ah, ah, you can't do that." I look at why I'm getting wavy lines, and it says the value of the attribute title associated with an element type image must not contain the less than character. And I look at this and I say, "Oh." Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense, right? This is an XML file I'm looking at here, and I have an attribute here, and I can't have an element. This is an element, right? This is the XSL, XSL value of element, and I'm sticking it, I'm trying to stick it inside of a quoted attribute, and that's just not okay, right? That's just not valid um, XML, and so that's what gave me these wavy lines. So, gee, how can I get the title of the movie in there? Well, this is a situation that comes up a lot, and there's a really simple, straightforward solution to it. I get rid of everything but the XPath, right? So now there's, I just put the XPath in there. And of course, if I ran it like this, it would say the title was slash slash movie, right? I want it to be the value of slash slash movie, and I use these little curly brackets to make that happen. So those little curly brackets there, in the situation where I'm inside an attribute where I couldn't possibly paste a command, an entire command, there's a shorthand version of the command that's for use exactly in that situation. And all it does is take the XPath and put it inside of curly brackets. Okay, so anytime you need to have, you need to have, um, anytime you need to have a value of inside an attribute in your output, this is how you do it. And you can't do it for putting an element in there because that would be not well formed. Okay, so let's, um, I think there's one other thing for us to talk about at the moment. Go back here and make sure that I've talked about the things that I wanted to. Um, yeah, here's all the stuff about the attribute. You can read through that again to review it. Okay, so now there's the copy of command. Yeah. Okay, so let's start back over here. And let's look at, here we are in EXPR. Let's look at the description of EXPR. And I'm scrolling through the description. I'm looking at the description tag. In fact, let me start by just modeling it. And let me model it with this whack whack movie where the ID equals, now you'd think I'd remember it by now, M E X P R. Okay, that gives me, oops, what did I do wrong here? Quack, M O V I E, where ID equals. Mm, what did I type wrong? Folks, you're probably seeing it long before I am. Quack, quack, movie. Where at ID equals M. Ah, E X P E R. Duh. I know, you probably saw that a million years ago. There, now I get the whole movie. Right? I actually, I want the movie description, so I'm going to do this trick like we just played before and say description. And now I'll just get the description. Okay, so I've isolated that description. Now I look at the description, and I see that the description is pretty much just HTML, right? I mean, I, can, I could take this description right here and paste it right into an HTML file, and it would work just fine, wouldn't it? There's nothing in there except tags that are that are named, and of course I did that on purpose, named exactly after HTML tags. So if I just 
pasted this entire description into my output, um, I'd be fine, right? And there's a particular and there's a special command I can use to do that. And so let's go and play around with that command. So first of all, let me grab my um, XPath here because that's a good XPath. It got me exactly what I wanted. It got me the description. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. And so, actually, let me go back here because I want something a little different, right? I don't want the whole description. I want all the children of the description. Can you see that? I don't want the description because that tag description, that's not an HTML tag. I want only the ones under it because those are the HTML tags. So I'm going to add one more little thing in here. Remember that guy? Give me all the children. And so now I'm going to get all the children under that description. So that one gives me the UL. That one gives me the P. Notice there are two children under description. There. Right? So this is what I want. This is the X path that's going to get me what I want, which is all the children of the description. Now, what do I want here? Under the title, I want the description of the movie. So let me go H2 here and say description. Right? That's just a little bit of HTML to make my page prettier. And then I'm going to go XSL, copy of, and then select that X path. That's the X path. I want a copy of all the children of the description of the movie whose ID is M-E-X-P-E-R. Okay, that's the, the most complicated thing here is the X path. Um, and that's almost always going to be the case. Once you get the idea of the commands, you got it. You don't really have to be reminded of it too much. But what's hard is always figuring out the right X path that's going to get you that stuff. Now, the value of command is the most frequently used command in all of XSL command land. And the copy of is not all that, is not all that, um, all that common. You'll see it a couple of times. You'll see it here and there. It's worth talking about, but it's not nearly the event that the value of command is. So the other thing to be careful of is um, you should really look in the schema to make sure that everything possibly under description is HTML only and that there's not some XML command that's not going to work very well inside of, um, inside of a, a, an HTML page. So let's go back over here. Let's look at this description and let's convince ourselves that everything in here is HTML. P, check, that's HTML. UL, that's, that is, that is, that is, that is. App, we found one that's not. So this, what I just typed in there, is already not going to work. Because if there's a media tag under a description, media is not an HTML tag and editor is not an HTML tag either. These ones what are we going to do with them? We're going to end up with a media tag inside of um, inside of HTML. So later on, we're going to talk about a much better way to deal with these kinds of um, situations where we have lots of different possibilities of the tag, and we want to get them quickly and easily over into HTML. OK, so let's wrap this up. Um, I went over how to create the, the XML or the XSL uh, transform in the first place by typing in this XSL uh, template with the match forward slash. Um, I went over the idea of putting a lot of HTML tags in there. So the vast majority of what I have actually in this transform is not XSL at all, it's HTML. It's a regular HTML page. Then I went over the idea of the value of command, and I ended up talking about the X paths that drive the value of command as much as I did the value of command. And then I went over the copy of command, which is of you know, much more limited scope and much more limited usefulness. I can use it to copy over um, chunks of uh, XML that matches HTML into an HTML file. I can also, and this is probably the most common use of it, when I'm going, when I'm transforming from XML to a different schema of XML, I can use the copy of command if the schema matches um, in, my, in my input and in my output for a particular tag. I don't have to worry about it. I can just copy the entire tag over because I know beforehand my schema, the schema of the input and the schema of the output match. Okay, so those are, those are the, that's the basic get values into the output type of, um, of XSL.